Hey guys, so there are a lot of sports car channels with the premise that, hey, I'm gonna begin from $100 and then look at me a year later and now I have a first edition Charizard base which I value at $600,000. Plus I have all these other, other inventory. Now Magic Gathering, I, there's not that many channels that do that and do trades. Like I mentioned when I went to Dallas convention and even the Collector Con, which is, used to be a Pokemon Con, I didn't see very much magic. There was magic, but out of the vendors, probably 5% or less of them had magic on hand. Uh, and the ones that did have on hand, they tend to be sealed product or graded cards. So there wasn't any, you know, un there wasn't like a bunch of dual lands or anything like that. It was more of a Pokemon con. The Collected Con was a Pokemon con, so you would expect that particular convention to be mostly Pokemon, which it was. There was some, there was actually a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh in comparison to magic. In the Dow Sports Con, you would expect it to be mostly sports, which it is, but a lot of vendors, I would say 20% of vendors carry some type of Pokemon now. Now, in the Sports Con, about 90 to 95% of the Collector Con carried some Pokemon, maybe a Game Boy game. I mean, Pokemon, if you think about it, it's just more than cards, right? You can get like a sweater. I saw a sweater, a Pokemon sweater with the Pikachu and the Squirtle and stuff on it, and that sold for like $300. I was like, wow, is this like a, a kind of a Christmas sweater, a very bulky sweater um, that you wouldn't ever see in Texas? But hey, it looked it looked really good. It looked vintage, and it's like the old school vintage, right? So making money from Magic the Gathering is it possible for someone to flip cards and flip, 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 and make money? I think so. So in the sports card realm, you have these kids, and I really do call them kids. They're very young people and they take a very small amount of money and they transfer it and they trade it and they trade one card for another card and the card goes up in price and the card goes up in price. Now it helps that in the sports market, you know, a card can go up in price one, 10 times overnight, depending on how that player has done or if that player has accomplished something kind of unique or in you know, Kobe Bryant's instant, rest in peace Kobe, he passes away. Obviously his autograph is gonna be more expensive than ever before. So an autograph jersey, autograph card, it doesn't an autograph hat, it doesn't really matter. Kobe is going, you know, he's considered one of the greats. I consider him one of the greats. He actually grew up pretty close to where I went to high school. And his high school still sells Kobe jerseys. It's really interesting. We went there for a tennis match and uh, it was a really, really nice high school. I, I want to call him Malvern Prep, but I don't think that's correct. It was a really nice high school and they uh, still sell his jersey in the shop. And, and it makes the high school a ton of money, by the way. So when you talk about magic, we had this idea of booster pack to Black Lotus or booster pack to Power Nine. And this is a concept that many of you probably have not heard of because it's not been played out this way anymore. You buy a single standard booster pack, you pay $4 or whatever the standard booster pack is. You open it, you take the cards in it, you take a picture of the card, then you go to these events and you tell people, hey, you know, I'm doing pack to power. That's what it's called. And then you take, and then you trade cards and then they, you know, trade and trade and trade. And then eventually you trade your collection, whatever you've been able to accumulate into a power nine. And, you know, you could do pack to Black Lotus. So you'd be trading, you know, you trading, trading, trading. It's the, uh, when I grew up, there was a very famous story about a guy who trades a plate paper clip for like a home. That's the same idea. You just continuously trade and eventually you're gaining value. And a lot of times when you gain value, it's because they wanna be on that blog or they wanna be in that video. I think that's what these sports card kids are doing. And I think this could be a trend in magic again. This sounds like a lot of fun. I did pack to power in my channel, my old channel, and I don't know if I did on this channel, but it's a lot of fun. You get to meet a lot of people trading and it, it goes back to roots. It's not difficult if you have you know, a bunch of underground seas to trade it into a Black Lotus. It is difficult if you just open a random pack and then you have to rely on basically people's kindness to help you get gain more and more value. And I might do something similar. I bought this binder. Well, I guess I took the Pokemon cards out of this binder. I didn't really buy it. And then I might do a pack to power soon. And uh, I might you might follow me on the journey and uh, it would be a lot of fun. So I bought actually two, I actually have two of these binders. I clear out the Pokemon cards and I might, I am really thinking about doing that as a pack to power because that's old school MTG finance. That is the definition of MTG finance. 
and every decision you make is important because you can't kind of go back. If you go backwards, if you put your money in a Tamagoy from a 200 and then it goes down to 20, the pack of power is not gonna work because it was very painful for me to go, for you to go from 20 to 200. And I think this is MTG financing great. And I think this is exactly what these sports kids are doing. I saw the Sasha T, he's been making YouTube videos for a year and a year and a half. He took like $100, now he has a uh, first edition base Charizard, PSA 10, and he has probably, I would guess, $2 million, $3 million in inventory. That's what he did. Could you do that in Magic? Yeah. Would it be fun to make videos about it and follow it? Yes. So what I'm banking on is that the culture of Magic will resemble, and MTZ Finance, should be the same as these vloggers. Like you can, you can vlog, vlog or put in the search engine Dallas Card Show. You will find a bunch of vloggers or find a bunch of people doing this pack to power type of exercise, right? They're trading cards for money. They take the money to buy cards and invest in cards. They take that investment and then shift it into more cards and so on. It's very fascinating. And that is MTG Finance. That is truly MTG Finance. Anyway, bye guys.